My name is Bob Lento. I'm CEO of Limelight Networks. Limelight Networks is headquartered in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, and our business is principally uh, what's known as uh, content delivery network. So think of us as owning the network that's responsible for delivering content to you, whether that's uh, live sports, news, uh, videos on demand that you might um, get from Amazon Prime Video, um, uh -huh. games that you might download from Sony on your PlayStation, um, applications that get updated on, on whatever phone you have. Um, so we own basically all the plumbing that's responsible for that. Um, and so we're one of the, you know, handful of companies in the world that have a very large uh, network with global scale and global reach connected to about a thousand or 1100 ISPs uh, throughout the world um, and have the ability to deliver content to, uh, to you. Thank you for being here. You um, are one of the folks that are keeping us sane. As I told my employees, we have an important role to play. We're not necessarily um, on the front line like our uh, hospital workers, and doctors and nurses, um, so we can't, you know, claim uh, credit for saving lives, but we can claim some credit for people, keeping people sane. Keeping people uh, sane. <laughs> and giving them some entertainment options and uh, being able to get educated at home. Um, so we do have an important role to play. And that is so important. And for introduction purposes, I'm Deanna Ransom, and I am the head of demand strategy and sales engineering for Televerde. And so excited um, to be able to have this conversation with you, Bob, and just learn a little bit more. You've already shared how, number one, your business um, is, is helping society to continue uh, to be able to engage, learn, um, and be able to stay mobile via networks. So um, thank you for that. Uh, I guess part of what we want to find out here today a little bit more is, as I think about the services that you provide to your customers, you're in a different position than most organizations are that are facing some of the challenges right now. Could you expand on what you're seeing in your business? Yeah, so, you know, I described a little bit about what we do. So if you think about it, um, as we all know, live sports is non-existent now. And that was a big part of our business that basically went from you know, wow. zero to zero, uh, literally overnight. So, you know, we would normally be part of uh, streaming March Madness uh, with the uh, NCAA. Um, you know, you had the Masters Golf Tournament, uh, baseball. We do baseball games for Major League Baseball, uh, NBA games. Uh, we were e even, you know, in a year-long planning cycle for the Olympics this summer in uh, Tokyo. So all of that's come to a crashing halt. Um, so that's the negative. But on the on the positive side, um, we do provide um, content to you for movies and all the things you watch on Amazon Prime or if you're in the UK on the BBC or um, other, you know, um, services like that, Disney right. uh, with their Disney Plus offering. And so that business, as you can imagine, is is up pretty significantly. So on the whole, um, our business is um, higher than what we had planned for it to be, call it pre-COVID. Um, and so the challenge for us is really, um, and we're quite blessed to have the challenge, is how do we perform at an even higher level um, and um, keep our employees engaged when it's you know, very easy um, disengage with all the distractions we have around us, uh, maybe with people being sick in and around um, your house, um, having to work from home. Sometimes, you know, depending on where in the world you are, you know, in the United States, we're typically, you know, lucky that most people have the availability of, of decent sized homes, but we've got employees in 
uh, London or Paris or Tokyo that, you know, up until the point where the government mandated um, that you couldn't go into the office, okay. they were asking, you know, please let me go in because they don't really have, uh, you know, um, you know, they don't really live in places that are conducive to working from home. If you've got, you know, kids and pets and, you know, a spouse that's maybe trying to work as well. Um, and so our initial reaction to this was to make it optional around the globe. Uh -huh. uh, people felt comfortable coming in the office. Our, our offices were open. Um, and if they did not feel comfortable, then they could feel free to work from home. How did that impact productivity, uh, if it was impacted at all? So the thing that's interesting is my biggest worry was going to be productivity. Mm. And I have to tell you, I'm really proud of our employees. Now, obviously, I don't know what's going on with every employee in every house. But, you know, speaking for myself, I feel like my days are longer, not shorter, now that I'm working from home. It starts earlier and ends later. Absolutely. Uh, and a lot less time in uh, commuting anywhere. So the little bit of peace and quiet I had while I was on a plane and could shut my eye and read a book, you know, I either read That's a book. Gone. That's, That's gone. That's gone. <laughs> like people just know you're available all day, every day. Yes. And um, I think that's true of our employees. I mean, I don't see um, any cracks in the wall from a productivity standpoint. Um, and we've, we've done a, a really good job um, utilizing technology, um, keeping communications open to employees, um, so we got a little bit lucky there. We moved into a new headquarters in Scottsdale last summer. As we were planning for that, we did things like double our VPN capacity, oh. um, you know, implement uh, Zoom in all of our conference rooms and on laptops so that, you know, people had probably six months of getting used to using the technology. Before so you were we, ahead of the curve. Yeah, we, and I, I just pure luck. Right. I mean, we just pure luck. Uh, <laughs> okay. You know, the, the move. I was going to ask for your crystal ball so we could yeah, tap no, into those no, insights. Not any smarter than the average bear. But we, the, we were forced to make some technology choices and have the opportunity to expand out um, capacity. So, you know, normally most people plan for 20, 30 percent of your workforce to work from home. Mm -hmm. um, really good practice would be, you know, 40 percent. We can actually handle twice as many employees as we have today um, wow. working remotely. Um, we are utilizing um, Slack and have opened COVID-19 coping channels uh, where people share funny videos and stories. As you've moved and deployed folks to work remotely, and I know that even at Televerde, right, um, as we began shifting and rolling out, moving people to working from home, and you find yourself um, a looking to make sure that you maintain engagement uh, with your employees. And, and I've been managing global teams for a long time. So I actually have had folks work for me that I never met in person. <laughs> so, but in this environment, are you seeing any impact from a morale perspective or folks needing that connectivity in some way where you've had to add an engagement uh, like a virtual cocktail parties have popped yeah. up. Yeah, so we've actually done that and it's been surprisingly effective. So I've been in the habit of uh, once a quarter at our headquarters, I do uh, beers with Bob. Um, so I take everybody out usually after our quarterly earnings and we do a kind of a happy hour. And then as I travel around to our other locations around the world, I'll do a similar thing. And so a couple of weeks ago, not no, maybe last week, the days are all Blue. They're running together. Um, we did beverages with Bob and I did, you know, from my location, uh, four of them in four different time zones. So I did one, you know, in the morning for me, that was the evening in uh, Asia. And I had a cup of coffee and they had, you know, their cocktails. <laughs> um, and so I've done them in the, um, at the time that's appropriate for them um, to have cocktails. That's so, so important. Yeah, that is uh, so important. People enjoy seeing each other. Um, and, and we're going to continue doing um, those. Um, we do a call a couple of times a week, uh, just an open call for people to hop on and ask any questions that they have about what's going on. 
Um, we've done some all hands um, calls. It was surprising to me. I thought it would be pretty obvious to people that our business would be doing well. Um, but, you know, in the first call I did with employees, I said, I just want to make sure everybody's aware we are not planning on doing any layoffs. In fact, we need people to step up, not step down or out. Um, and I got a lot of comments of, oh, it was so nice to hear that. I was so worried yeah. about that. And so what you think is obvious isn't always obvious. The other thing we've done that's, uh, we did the first one last week. Instead of, for the last few weeks, I've been doing emails to employees, just giving them updates. Last week, I, uh, from my, you know, laptop that I'm talking to you on, um, used QuickTime. So normally when I do a video, it's in a special room at our corporate headquarters with, you know, a fancy camera. The right and, look. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, all, and he puts that stuff on your face to take the shine off, you know. Um, <laughs> last week I did it from my office um, in the morning with QuickTime and one take, and we shipped it out to employees. It was two and a half minutes, and we got really good feedback. So this week I did another one, only I did um, 30 seconds, and then I virtually passed it off to one of my senior leaders. And so Dan, who runs operations, did about a minute and a half. So still about a two minute video, uh, but they heard, the employees heard from me and one of our senior leaders. Um. And so, um, so far we've gotten good feedback on that. And if we continue to get that, we're going to do that format where I'll do a 30 to 45 second, you know, update and then pass it off to a senior leader um, to give the teams updates. And the other thing we've started is, you know, even before when we use Zoom, most people would just dial in, right? Or use their computer, but no video. We've asked everybody to turn their video on. Um, and in larger meetings, what we've said is, the person presenting has to have their video on. And if you ask a question, you have to turn your video on to ask the question. Um, and it's surprising how much being able to see people um, helps you stay engaged in the meeting. It's really easy when you're on the phone to be doing email or, you know, scroll through some stuff. Yes. Um, but if, if there's 10 people in there, and people have it on gallery view, you know, you can see everybody. You sort of have to pay attention. Yeah, you see um, when the hands start uh, creeping towards the keyboard and, exactly. and things like that. You know, and so <laughs> that's that's really um, helped. So I would say, you know, I'm really proud of our workforce. We needed them to stay 100% productive. Now, do I think we've lost some productivity? I'm sure we have. There's distractions at home that aren't in the office. But on the other hand, I think we've gained in some areas. People have learned how to use the technology. People have learned how to collaborate um, without having to be in front of each other. Right. So I think, you know, what's interesting to me is going to be when we go back to normal, what is the new normal? Yes. Like, will we, like, I don't think we're just going to be to totally remote forever, but will we utilize technology more? Right. We've been talking, we've been hearing about, you know, I can remember 10 years ago, Cisco came out with telepresence and that was going to stop the need for travel. Right? For travel. Um, I remember that. Yeah. And so that didn't quite work out well, that way. But I do believe coming out of this, there will be less um, reliance on being in a room with somebody, more reliance on technology and people that have lived through this will feel more comfortable hmm. with that versus feeling like if you're not in the room, you're missing out on something. Yes. And that's important. I re I recall um, the dot-com bubble when it burst and travel budgets were slashed. And yeah. that was the rise of virtual platforms, right? Um, and I think when you look at something like what we're experiencing globally, right? We are absolutely all in it together. I think to your point, there will be a new normal. Um, I have no crystal ball of what that will look like, but I think there will be a new normal. There will be surprising insights uh, about how you mentioned your workforce is, you're able to just remain proud of them because they are stepping up at such a time. And 
as you're serving your customers right now, are there things that your customers um, are experiencing that you need to think about as you think about going back to the normal? Are they asking you for things that they weren't asking you for before? What's new from your customer base in this area? Yeah, surprisingly, our customers are, are adopting to this new world pretty rapidly. Now, keep in mind, my customers tend to be, um, you know, technology, um, you know, literate organizations. I think that they're techno, you know, they they might be, you know, it might be NBC, right, which is a broadcast, right. but they live on technology. And um, I, I'm surprisingly not seeing any delay or dysfunction or frustration mm -hmm. with customer communication. Now, the one thing we do see, to be fair, is customers are really focused on just kind of holding down the fort, and it's hard to get new stuff done right. uh, with them. And so I think that that's going to have to come back more to normal. Um, but you know, I think everybody's learning as we go. You know, I've, I've been through a number of crises in my life. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. And most of the time they've been um, financial crisis, crises, right? Or, you know, uh, the biggest sort of non-financial crisis I've lived through was 9-11. Yeah. But that was like a, you were hit. And then the next day, everybody said, okay, let's work together to pick the pieces up. And things started moving. Like we're sitting here today, we don't even know when we'll be able to start going back where's, to we, we, Where's the end? We don't know where the end. Exactly. And when we get to it, what will it look like? You know, I mean, I can tell you it's going to be a while before I'm comfortable, you know, going into a crowded restaurant or, you know, a crowded uh, plane. You know, if they can guarantee me that the seat next to me will be empty, I'll be, I probably will be one of the early adopters of going back to traveling, but right. not if I'm going to be, you know, side by side with people. Absolutely. Well, look at how you're, you're speaking to things that I think become really important, right? Where's the bottom? Nobody knows. And what's the new normal, right? right. How, how are we? How are we, because it's all of us, how are we going to recover together? How are we going to travel together and interact with each other? And it may not go back to being exactly the same, but we know there's some version of it um, that is going to recover. And so as you think about your business and your customers, for example, you had mentioned earlier about sports, right? <laughs> your sports business kind of being a little quiet right now. What does it look like in the sense of, we know that something's coming back. How do we plan for what that is in the midst of uncertainty? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a question we've been wrestling with because I don't know what sports are going to look like. You know, are, re are re people really going to go pack in, you know, a Yankee Stadium in New York City? Are they, you know, we do a lot of um, sports. We, you know, I mean, it's a big pastime across mm -hmm. many cultures, um, whether it's cricket in India, rugby in Europe, you know, European football or soccer, as we call it. Um, it's going to be really interesting. I, I think that what's going to happen is when sports starts up, and it will, mm -hmm. not next week, probably not next month, but not for not too long from now, will the stadiums be half empty either by regulation or by choice? And therefore, the need for our services, the ability to watch sports on um, internet connected devices goes up. Um, you know, so when it comes back, does it sort of come back like this or does it come back like that? Yeah. Perspective of our business. I, my guess is it's going to come go up pretty quickly because A, there'll be so much pent up demand for it. And B, P, 
people will choose to watch it on their computer, their phone, their smart TV, rather than venturing out, you know, with your family in tow to a baseball game. I think it's going to be a while for that. I mean, think about it. I think it's something like, what, 30 days to form a new behavior, right? Uh, many of us have been, you know, um, locked up a little more than 30 days, so to speak, right? I'm on the East Coast. And where, so where are you located? I'm in Delaware. Okay. So the, the New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware corridor is yep. not seeing a flattening. We're seeing a, a little bit of a spike here, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and I've been, uh, we were moved internally um, back towards the end of February. Okay. So for me, yeah. So for, for me, I have a different feeling and I, I hear you and, and I was speculating as you were talking, right? Um, how would I feel about getting on a crowded plane? I travel globally all over the place. How would I feel about that now? Not with someone sitting directly next to me. Um, and, and to your point of new behaviors being formed, where people have now adopted these new technologies, people are streaming more now than I am streaming more now than I ever have. Um, and I have adopted things that I was not using before, like an Instacart, <laughs> right? Um, I'm doing, I'm, I've taken on some new behaviors and I don't know if they're gonna last beyond this time, but I would think, and this is a speculation, not a prediction, I would think that for safety purposes, there's going to be a little bit of a uh, adoption, right? Where it's gonna take a little bit of time for folks to feel comfortable in that type of crowd. And maybe there will be reductions in live ticket sales, but they will uptick in some level of a virtual ticket sale, right? I attended last week, I'm a big jazz fan. And uh, the jazz festival that I typically attend, of course, couldn't happen. Right. But what they did was they actually moved the jazz festival to a virtual platform where yeah. you had all these musicians and bands and, you know, on their own square playing along to each other. Right. Um, and I thought that that was so interesting. And I began to wonder, is that is that the future? Well, think about Broadway plays and, you know, do they all just go online? I mean, you, you're starting to see now, you know, because all the theaters are shut, you can, you know, pay for a movie ticket online and watch it on your screen. First, mm -hmm. you know, movies that would normally be yes. premiering in theaters, you can now get on your screen. You know, before, the, the reason why they couldn't do that is the theaters had a lot of power um, mm -hmm. and would have revolted against, against that. Now there's no alternative. But then the question is, when the theaters start opening up, now that that precedent is set, does it now, you know, coming soon to a theater and a home screen near you, you know, do they both yeah. Um, yeah. have to have the ability to compete for you? Whereas before it came out into a theater and then you could watch it on Netflix or Amazon Prime or Disney, right? Um, and so now they're going to say, well, that worked pretty well for us. Um, so yeah, you want to go to a theater, go to a theater, but you want to watch it at home, pay 20 bucks and, you know, the whole family gets to watch the it. The whole family, yeah. Right? And so that's going to be uh, interesting to... to uh, so now work. you're talking about paying for the experience, right? Yeah. Going to the theater is an experience, but if you just want the content, now it's available to you in a new format. So I think this is all, and I, I'm just enjoying the, the conversation and the learning here. I have a, a question though, one that um, I'd like to run past you and get your feedback on, okay. if that's okay. So I have a perspective that um, even in the midst of challenge, there's opportunity for those who are willing to adjust and adapt and pivot. What are your thoughts about that as a leader? Well, we're seeing that, you know, we have to do it as a business. I'm seeing that we have to do it as a leadership team. Um, employees have to do it, you know, in their own personal lives. And so this is a really a test. You know, I think the, 
they say the strong survive. I think the, 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 those with the ability to adapt, you know, will survive. Um, and that's, that's going to be the, the new strength is your ability to handle change. Um, and so, and we're seeing it, you know, some organizations are going to come out of this stronger, um, with different, um, work habits and some organizations unfortunately won't be able to adapt and will will go away. Um, but I think for sure the world is going to be a different place and the challenge and the opportunity for us is how do we adapt to it rapidly um, so far i like what i'm seeing from our business um but it takes a lot of leadership um you know and i challenge myself and i challenge my team to make sure that we're paying attention to you know what are the employees saying what are their needs are we keeping them engaged are we providing opportunities for collaboration uh, and cooperation between teams, you know, yeah. it's it's definitely there's an element of challenge that exists when you can't just get face to face with somebody and after work go out and have a beer together or you know any kind of beverage and sort of say hey, you know, I shouldn't have acted that way in that meeting. I'm sorry. Let's figure out how we work together. Like the hallway, you know, conversations. Yeah. Um, we have to figure out how to replace that, you know, um, and hopefully it won't be too long before we are able to go out and have a cocktail, you know, or a, a soft drink together. But I think it's the leaders and the organizations um, that can adapt to the changing environment quickly. And of course, utilize technology uh, as Absolutely. opposed to resisting it. I mean, I think that the technology is an enabler, um, but people, people are what it's about. And, and this just enables you and I to talk, you know, together and see each other's face. Um, it doesn't tell us what to say and how to act. Right. And so Absolutely. we still have to be, you know, people and engage and interact and have respect for each other and act with integrity and act as teams and, th and therefore the leadership challenge, you know, will never be replaced by technology. You have just hit two things that I feel it's important to restate, and that is adapt and use technology. And here at Televerde, we are, you know, I'm really happy uh, that the organization are we're doing those things here. We have great leadership with Morag uh, and the executive leadership team, uh, and I couldn't be prouder of the work that we're doing as a team and to hear your feedback on the adaption and technology utilization. I think that's something that you could, that's advice, right? For other companies as they are facing the same challenges we all are. Yeah, and I'm sure you guys are doing great. I've had the opportunity to work with Morag in the past and have a tremendous amount of respect for her and her capabilities. And uh, I'm sure you guys are doing great. Thank <laughs> you.